Daniel chapter 3 verse 25. Nebuchadnezzar threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the uh, fiery furnace. And instead of seeing them go up in smoke, he looks in, he says in Daniel 3.25, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. That's an obvious reverence to Jesus Christ. There have been thousands of messages preached by preachers on how Jesus was the fourth man in the fire. But yet in the NIV it changes that and Nebuchadnezzar says the fourth looks like a son of the gods. Plural. The same thing in the New American Standard. A son of the gods. And in other translations they change it in the footnote so that it just simply cast doubt on whether or not that was Jesus Christ in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now again, that's just satanic. And how a Christian can see these changes and not be disturbed is beyond my comprehension. In Matthew 5.22, here the uh, King James Version quotes Jesus Christ. And he says, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. Now, the new translations change that. And if they're right, then Jesus Christ is a sinner. Because the NIV says, But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. The same thing in the New American Standard. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be guilty before the court. Now, the problem with that is that Jesus was angry with his brethren. If the King James reading is true, then he was angry with a cause. So there's no problem. But in the New Translations, it just simply says, if you're angry, then you're in uh, danger of the judgment. And if you turn over to Mark chapter 3, verse, verse 5, it says that Jesus looked upon them in anger. And you can't tell me that when Jesus cleared the temple and turned over the money changer tables and drove them out and yelled, screamed at them with the bullwhip, <laughs> you can't tell me that he wasn't angry. He was, but it was with a cause. And according to the King James Version, that means that it was justified. The new translations turned Jesus Christ into a sinner. John 1.18 is another place you should look in your new translation. It says, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. Now what's wrong with the new translations? Well, the NIV changes that to say, No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only, who is at the Father's side. What's wrong with that? It just simply makes it nonsense. You can't refer to God and then Jesus as God the one and only and then refer to Him as sitting at the Father's side. The Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, but they're not three separate gods. And so to call Jesus God is fine, but when you say that uh, no one has ever seen God but God the one and only, you just made the Bible into a bunch of nonsense. But what's worse is in the New American Standard, which says that no one has seen God at any time, the only begotten God who is in the bosom of the Father. He has explained Him, which is a terrible translation. Uh, but Jesus is not a begotten God. He's the only begotten Son. He is the eternal God. He was begotten of Mary. But He was eternally, and is eternally, past, present, future, God. And uh, this translation from the New American Standard matches the cult translations, such as the Jehovah's Witnesses in their New World Translation. They say, the only begotten God. And the last one we'll look at is in 1 Timothy 3.16. Now this one... Uh, I'll tell a story about it, but it says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. God was manifest in the flesh. An obvious reference to Jesus Christ being God. Now, I was witnessing to Jehovah's Witnesses, 
and I had them returning to my house and after about six or seven weeks I got them on the subject of the deity of Jesus Christ and this uh, particular conversation we were talking about Jesus Christ being God and I picked up my Bible and the one I had was an NIV and I opened it up to show them that Jesus is God manifest in the flesh and when I got there it was gone if you look in your NIV it says simply he appeared in a body well so did I big deal the, the verse is special not because he peer, appeared in a body Jesus is special not because he appeared in a body but because he's God appearing in a body and the new translations have corrupted that the same things in the New American Standard Bible by my confession great is the mystery of godliness he who was revealed in the flesh the uh, New Living Translation says Christ was revealed in a human body you can't that the Greek word for Christ is Christos and that's not in any Greek manuscript on the face of the earth why they put the word Christ in there is beyond me and then in the the message it says the same thing he he appeared in a human body now that's just a handful of the changes that have taken place in the new translations you can look at Isaiah 714 in the revised standard version they changed virgin to maiden destroying the uh, prophecy of the virgin birth if you look in the NIV throughout the Old Testament references to sodomites is changed to quote male shrine prostitutes and that's been capitalized upon by the homosexual and gay rights movement today to make it look like uh, the only time homosexuality is a sin is when it's done for prostitution purposes. 2 Corinthians uh, 2.17 in the King James says, Not as many which corrupt the Word of God. And they've changed that to say, Not as many as peddle the Word of God. Why? Because they are corrupting the Word of God, so they had to change that so it didn't nail them in their sin. 1 Timothy 6.10 says, The love of money is the root of all evil. And the new translation changed that to say the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Just like Satan in the garden, taking a word out, changing a word here, adding a word there, and they totally corrupt the word of God. 2 Timothy 2.15 is the only commandment in the Bible to study. And the new translations take the word study completely out, and it says be diligent to present yourselves. Now what's that mean? Take a shower, get a haircut brush your teeth. I mean, what's that mean? It, the King James tells you to study. The New Translations change that. And another place is 1 John 5, 7. Totally removed. Uh, the last 12 verses of Mark are either removed or put in brackets, and so on and so forth, and we'll talk more about that in a, in a future segment. But this gives you the basics as to why we are King James only. We use the King James Version of the Bible. We don't use any other. We don't recommend any other. And we do expose the corruptions in the new translations because we believe you should not add to or take away from the Word of God. And we'll look at that in a moment, but that's a commandment from God. We should not toy with God's Word, taking words out, adding words, and corrupting words. And it actually has very strong condemnation in God's Word for those who do such things.